So welcome to the CRPA New Gun Owners Seminar. My name is Jerry Clark. I am the California Rifle and Pistol Association's training coordinator. I carry several credentials such as NRA Chief Range Safety Officer, NRA Instructor for Home Firearm Safety, Metallic Cartridge Reloading, Pistol, Rifle, Shotgun, Personal Protection in the Home, Personal Protection Outside the Home, and Muzzle Loading. Also carry USA Archery Level 1 Instructor credentials, as well as I carry a few California DOJ credentials. So I am a Firearm Safety Certificate Instructor, and I've been running a youth shooting sports program for the last eight years. So today's program will cover gun safety, types of firearms and their parts, ammunition, magazines, sights, what you need at a range, what to expect on the range, cleaning your gun, gun storage, and the CRPA training courses that are available. So our seminar goals today is to highlight the knowledge, skills, and attitude necessary for selecting the proper firearm, safely handling, storing, transportation, and cleaning of a firearm. So gun safety, gun safety rules. Gun safety is everybody's responsibility. The three most important rules of gun safety are, number one, always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Always keep your finger off the trigger until ready to shoot and always keep the gun unloaded until you're ready to use. Now, if you remember those, everything starts with always. They're capitalized for a reason and underlined. If you follow these rules, we're gonna have a great day out on the range and accidents are going to be minimal. So gun safety, other rules to keep in mind. Know your target and what is beyond. Know how to use your gun safely. Read the owner's manual. Be sure the gun is safe to operate. If it's been sitting in storage for a while, have a gunsmith take a look at it. Use the correct ammunition for your gun. Wear eye and ear protection as appropriate. Never use alcohol or drugs before or while shooting. This includes prescription drugs and over-the-counter drugs. Ask your doctor if your prescriptions will actually hinder your ability. And be aware that certain types of guns and many shooting activities require additional safety precautions and in consideration would be black powder. So gun safety, the gun owner's responsibilities. Americans enjoy a right to keep and bear arms that citizens of many other countries do not. The right to own firearms, but with that right comes responsibilities. It's the gun owner's responsibility to store, operate, and maintain his or her gun or firearms safely to ensure that unauthorized and untrained individuals cannot gain access to his and her firearms, learn and follow all applicable laws that pertain to the purchase, possession, and use of firearms in his or her jurisdiction. Now, guns are neither safe nor unsafe by themselves when people practice responsible gun ownership Firearms are safe. Understanding the types of guns and their parts. Two basic types of firearms exist. One type is a long gun, such as shotguns and rifles. The other type is a pistol. To understand how a gun works, you must first understand the action. The action is a group of moving parts used to load, fire, and unload a gun. So actions for a long gun. So you have a bolt action rifle, which actually you have to move that bolt back and forth every time you use it, single shot. A lever action rifle, where it's an old cowboy style rifle, where you have to move the lever up and down in order to load the firearm. And then you have a pump action. So that four stock moves backwards and forwards. So each time you wish to load around, you must pump that. So a semi-automatic rifle normally has some type of magazine 
that you're able to put in. And each time that you actually pull the trigger, a spent round will come out. Then it will chamber a new round for you. But you must pull the trigger every single time. So a hinge action. These happen to be mostly shotguns and you will see a lot of air rifles that actually have a hinge action. You must release a lever in order to get the barrel to open. And at that point, you're able to load the firearm and then pull it back up, pull the barrel back up and you're able to lock it back in place, shoot those rounds. And when you're done, you hit that lever one more time and it will e eject those particular rounds. The last one here happens to be a falling block. Now, falling block is kind of a unique type of firearm. Don't see them much anymore today, but they do exist. So what you have to do is they have a lever, like a lever action rifle does. It actually opens up the breech for you to load a single round. Then when you close that breech, that, that round is chambered and ready to go. So the first picture here happens to be a bolt action rifle. As you can see, the stock, the safety. Now, safeties are mechanical devices that fail. Therefore, we need to refer back to rule number two. Always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Now, that bolt handle, that is a bolt action rifle. Therefore, it needs to be pushed forward and locked in place every time you wish to shoot. Then obviously the barrel, the muzzle, the trigger guard, and the trigger. Now, remember, that muzzle needs to be pointed in a safe direction always. So it goes back to rule number one. Always keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction. So the second piece here happens to be a pump action shotgun. So again, we have the stock. We have the cheek rest. We have a safety. Again, remember, safeties are mechanical devices that fail. Therefore, we need to refer back to rule number two again. Always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Now, we go to the four stock. Now, the four stock, you must move backwards and forwards in order to load the rounds. Then again, the muzzle. We have the barrel. Now, on this one, we're kind of showing you the magazine. The magazine is actually a tubular magazine where you're loading your rounds into prior to shooting. So your trigger guard, your trigger, you have your pump release. So that release right there allows you to load the firearm with no with nothing in it. It will not allow you to move that four stock forward without you pushing that. And then we obviously have the butt pad. That butt pad is going to save your shoulder if it's put in the right position. So types of pistols, you have semi-automatic pistols. Those normally require a magazine. Therefore, you have to put the magazine into the grip. And at that point, that slide will be open, meaning the breech is open and there are no rounds chambered. The moment that you release that slide release, then it will actually load the first round or chamber the first round. The double action revolver. Now the double action revolver is something that you have a release for your cylinder. Your cylinder will drop out in order for you to load. You put that cylinder back in once you're done. At that point, when you pull the trigger, you're pulling the trigger, which pulls the hammer back and then fires. Now, that can also be used as a single action. Now, what I mean by that is that if you pull the hammer back, then the trigger is not as large of a pull. So let's talk about a single action revolver. Now a single action revolver, actually you have to pull the hammer back about halfway in order to release the cylinder spin freely. At that point, you're gonna have to turn around and open the gate in order to load each round. Now each one of these, both your double action, your single action revolvers, actually have ejector rods. So in a double action, you're going to release the cylinder, you're gonna push the ejector rod, and all six rounds are gonna come out at one time. On a single action, you're gonna to have to do that for each individual cylinder. So understand they're similar, but there are some differences that you must be aware of. So 
As we look at the pictures here, we're looking at a semi-automatic pistol. Again, we have the muzzle, we have the barrel, we have the frame, we have the safety. Remember what I keep saying about the safety, it's a mechanical device that can fail. So the safety needs to be rule number two, always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Then you have the slide. You have your trigger guard, your trigger, your magazine release. Now, the magazines do go into the bottom of the grip, so pay attention. Some of them are different based on which kind of manufacturer, what model it is. Some of them have a push button like this one does. Some of them have a little spring that you must move out of the way in order for the magazine to come out. Now, they're not all going to drop out. Some of them you may have to pull out. So, dependent upon, again, make and model of the firearm. The second picture here, this happens to be a double action revolver. So, again, you have your barrel, you have your muzzle, you have your frame, you have your hammer, you have your grip, you have your trigger, you have your trigger guard, and again, there's your ejection rod. So, this particular firearm, the release for the cylinder happens to be on the end of that ejector rod. Different make, different models. It all depends on which one you have, how it's going to function. So please, by all means, read your owner's manual when you get your firearms and understand how they operate and how they work. So ammunition. It's important to understand and be able to select the proper ammunition for your firearm. Failing to do so can cause seriously serious bodily injury or damage. Most firearms have the cartridge de designation stamped on the side of the barrel or the receiver. Also, read the label on the box and look at the crest of the ammunition. What I mean by the crest of the ammunition, if you look on the very bottom of the brass, you'll see it should be stamped with the type of ammunition that it is. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to the box. When you walk into a gun store and you say, I need 45 Colt, okay? You need to make sure that you make the correct order and say, I need 45 Long Colt or I need 45 ACP. The guys behind the counter don't know what kind of firearm you have. And here in the great state of California, we still are having to do background checks for ammunition. So if we're going to be doing those, once you order that ammunition, you own it even if they've given you the wrong one because there's no way to take and put that back into the system. So ammunition is fired when the gun's firing pin hits the ammunition's primer. This causes the spark from the primer to ignite the gunpowder. As the powder burns, it creates high pressure gases that causes the case to expand, forming a seal, and pushes the bullet down the barrel and out the muzzle. Ammunition is generally classified by caliber, which is determined by the diameter of the barrel. Smaller calibers tend to produce less recoil, while larger calibers transfer more energy at the point of impact, which tends to produce more recoil. Now one thing that you need to understand is there are three types of cartridge malfunctions. Each one of these, you need to listen to them and understand them. Go back and reread them. Read them over. Understand how they work. The first one is a misfire. A misfire is a failure for a cartridge to ignite when the primer of the case rim has been struck by the firing pin. This situation may be caused by a defect in the cartridge or by a defect in the firearm that causes a weak firing pin hit. Now, normally a misfire, you need to keep in, in mind rule number one, always keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction at least 30 seconds. If it doesn't go off by then, then go ahead and let's eject that round. Now understand, when we eject that round, it is still a live round. Therefore, you need to put it in some type of container to keep it contained because it could in fact still fire. The second type of malfunction that you need to be aware of is a hang fire. 
This is a perceptible delay in the ignition of a cartridge after the primer of the case rim has been struck by the firing pin. This delay may last several seconds. Now, a hang fire is all of a sudden you hear click, delay, boom. Click, delay, fire. Now, make sure you don't get caught up in this because a hang fire is actually the first step for a misfire. So if after 30 seconds that hasn't gone off, that hang fire becomes a misfire. Now, don't be silly and sit there and look down the barrel or the muzzle of the firearm because what's gonna happen if that is in fact a hang fire, it's going to still fire. There's a great video out there on YouTube of a gentleman with a shotgun who actually turned around and had a hang fire, decided he was gonna look down the muzzle of the shotgun and that shotgun went off and put a nice big hole in the middle of his hat. So don't be stupid and understand what you need to do. Do not look down the muzzle of a firearm. The third and last type of cartridge malfunction that you could run across is actually called a squib load. Squib loads occur when the cartridge develops less than normal pressure or velocity after the ignition of a cartridge. Squib loads can cause a bullet to fail to exit the muzzle and become lodged in the bore. Now at this point, I would highly recommend that you turn around and listen to how everything's been fired all day. If you get something that sounds different, stop, take out the ammunition source, unload the firearm, pull the round that was chambered or whatever happens to be and take a look. Run a cleaning rod down the barrel because I've seen these where they've happened where it actually, the bullet was still in the barrel, never exited the muzzle and it could, in fact, if you load the next round behind it, it could actually become a pipe bomb and that's not a good thing and you want to eliminate that as much as you can. So our next step is to talk about magazines. The magazine is a storage device designed to hold cartridges prior to insertion into the firing chamber. It's important to know what type of magazine your gun has. Read your owner's manual to ensure you properly load and unload prior to usage, storage, and cleaning. The location of the magazines will vary dependent upon the action, make, and model of the firearm. Various types of magazines exist, but the two most common magazines out there are a box magazine and a tubular magazine. Sights. Sights are a device used to assist in aligning and aiming your firearm. There are different types of sights available for your gun. Iron sights. Most firearms do actually come with iron sights. Iron sights, also known as open sights, are the most common sights used on pistols and rifles. Open iron sights consist of a square notch, a front blade, but they can vary based on the make and model of the firearm. Look at your firearm, see what actually is on it. Some firearms don't even come with any sights on them. They're actually built to put a scope on. Now we're gonna talk about that. Optical sights. Many rifle and sometimes pistol owners choose to use optical sights. There are two main types of optical sights, telescopic and reflective. So what you need to know when you go to the range, you need to be able to put your firearm into a good gun case, some type. It could be fabric, it could be hard plastic, it could be a metal case, but you need to make sure that it's locked up for transportation purposes. Make sure that you have the ammunition that's designed for your firearm. Now, if you wish to take your own targets with you, fantastic. If you want to go ahead and purchase them when you get to the range because you didn't have that particular piece, so be it. Also, eye protection and ear protection. These are a must. What I would highly recommend is you get your own. Go ahead and purchase ear protection that is suited for you. Now understand, a lot of people, when it comes to ear protection, 
don't like to wear the muffs because when you're shooting rifles and shotguns, they tend to get in the way. I prefer to have my ear protection in my ears. Eye protection, again, if you wear glasses, check and make sure that they are ballistic rated. They will have a, a number on the inside of the arm of the glass that tells you 125 or a larger number that tells you that they're ballistic rated. If they're not, please put on a pair of safety glasses. Safety glasses, there are all kinds of different styles out there, whatever you'd prefer. I prefer the yellow glasses myself, but that's a choice that I make. You go ahead and make that choice that you want and make sure that you have proper eye and ear protection when you do go to the range. So what to expect at the range? Most ranges have range safety officers whose job is to supervise shooters, enforce the rules, and handle any problems that may occur. The range safety officer has absolute power on that range. Listen to them. They are there to help you. So range commands. Two of the most important range commands are cease fire and commence firing. Commence firing is the command given to tell everybody that it's safe to shoot. A cease fire is used whenever all shooting must stop. Normally a safety issue. Anyone on the range can call a cease fire. Here are the steps that you need to take if a cease fire is called. So the first thing you want to do is stop shooting immediately. Take your finger off the trigger and wait for further instructions. Now, if a range safety officer gives you a command to unload and make safe with the finger off the trigger and the gun pointed in a safe direction, you can follow these important steps. Remove your ammunition source. Empty the chamber and lock the action open. Keep your hands off of the firearm and step away from the firing line. Now, turn around and what's going to happen here is he's going to tell you when it's safe to come back and keep working or he's going to tell you, okay, commence firing. He's going to give you the commands. He's going to tell you what's going on. All right, so let's talk about cleaning your gun. Now that you know more about your gun, taking it to the range for target practice, it's unloaded, safely stored. It's important to know how to clean and maintain your gun. Cleaning and maintaining your gun pres preserves their functionality and the value while keeping them safe and accurate. The effort and attention that you put into maintaining your firearm will pay off in peace of mind that your gun will do what it needs to do when it needs to do it. There are lots of rifle and pistol cleaning kits available today. Make sure you add a pair of gloves and safety glasses to your list of items. Now, the last part of this says no ammunition or magazines should be on the table while cleaning for safety purposes. I'll tell you, the first thing you need to make sure is ammunition is put away Magazines are put away. Now make sure that when you open the breech and you look down the chamber that there is nothing chambered. So when you brought it off of the range, you should have made sure of that before you brought it and stored it and brought it home because transportation is a very important part. So home safety and storage. There is no rule to storing a gun safely and securely. You must be sure that unauthorized persons do not have access to your firearm. There are many storage options available to choose from. So trigger locks and cable locks. Most firearms come with a lock from the manufacturer. Not all of them do. So listen, when you buy your firearm, listen to the salesman behind the counter. They'll tell you if they actually have one. Fabric and plastic hard cases. Fabric and plastic card cases are designed to safely transport your firearms, but the materials are not intended for long-term long storage. Metal gun cases and strong boxes. Metal gun cases offer portable storage like a fabric or a plastic case, but have much greater security. Strong boxes are similar, but can be mounted 
for permanent attachment. Those are for your CCW owners. A lot of them do actually have a strong box that is in their vehicle for storage. So continuing, locking steel gun cabinets. Locking steel cabinets are lighter than gun safes, but they have simple locking mechanisms and a lack of insulation also reduces the weight, making them more affordable. Now, a lot of folks will use those to store their ammunition. You can store your firearms, but I would highly recommend that you take the time and start looking into a gun safe, which we're gonna talk about right now. So gun safes. Safes possess locks that prevent a gun from being handled or loaded by unauthorized folks. Now, a lot of these are carpeted and upholstered interiors and have gun racks to help protect the finish of your firearms. They serve as an effective theft deterrent. There are many makes and models of gun safes, so it's important to think about cost as well as the amount of firearms you own or plan to purchase in the future. Safes come in many different configuration, gauges of steel, locking mechanisms, level of fire resistance, warranties, exterior color, and finishes. All of these are things to consider and will determine the cost of the safe. Safes can get very large, normally heavy and expensive, but are the most secure gun storage option available. So check out our CRPA training courses. Now that you've got the basics, the CRPA offers a variety of training courses for beginning, intermediate, and advanced shooters. Pistol, rifle, shotgun, muzzle loader, safety and personal protection, and reloading courses are all available and taught by the leading experts in our field, such as myself, certified instructors for each of those disciplines. To find a course, visit our website at www.crpa.org, or if you have any questions, feel free to email us at training at crpa.org or give us a call at 714-992-2772. And as always, be safe, shoot straight, and fight back for your rights.